comment. God bless you and thanks for this great opportunity. I have a question. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, the Apostle Paul mentions a justice crown. Is this real that we are going to receive different crowns? How many classifications or different crowns? Uh, please excuse my English. My first language is Spanish. Thank you so much, friend, actually. So, we'll answer this question for you. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. Yes, it is true. There are different crowns. You know how many crowns there are in the Bible? Five crowns. Didn't you know that a Christian is going to have five crowns? What are those five crowns? The first one... The Bible says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, of whom the Lord the righteous judge will give me at that day, and not to me only, but also all them that love His appearing. So in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, we'll notice right here that the crown of righteousness is given. To who? The crown of righteousness is given to those, notice what that verse is, to all them that love His appearing. So if you don't have this crown, you got a major problem. You're very carnal, worldly, and I think you should get slapped ten times over, alright? I'm sorry, but the reason why is this. If you're going to get this crown, all you have to do is this. All you have to do is want Jesus to come back, see? Just want Jesus to come. Just go to heaven. See, love the appearing of Jesus Christ. That should be the easiest crown. That should be the easiest. Because if you love heaven and God that much, and you, don't, you want to escape this world, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to escape this world. I do not like this God-forsaken world. I want to get out of here, and you're going to get that crown of righteousness. Amen. But you'd be surprised how many people won't have this one. That's right. All right, let's also look at James 1. James chapter 1. James 1. So I want to say this for people who believe in a post-tribulation rapture. What you should very carefully ponder and think about is this, is that if you don't want, if you keep insisting and do not want this rapture to be before the tribulation, that should be something very problematic for you, you should think about. It sounds like that you don't want this to happen real soon. It's like you want to push it away. And how many of you are going to miss out the easiest crown in the Bible? Amen. See what Satan can do with wrong doctrine? With wrong doctrine, he can make you miss out even the easiest ones to do. All right, look at James chapter 1, verse 12. James chapter 1, verse 12. Can somebody read that for us? Blessed is the man that endureth in temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. All right, so notice right here is the crown of life. So how do you get that crown of life? It's enduring through trials. It's passing through trials. So if you're going through trials right now, that's something to rejoice about. That's an opportunity for you to get this crown of life. If you have no trials in your life, you're not going to get this crown. So whatever temptation, whatever sin, whatever suffering or test God is putting you through, if you endure through it, you're going to get the crown of life. Now, if you want to cheat, I'll show you a cheating method, all right? But we're not going to turn to that verse. You know how to cheat and get this real quick? It is Revelation 2. So if you want to write this down, you can write this down. Here's a cheating method. How do you cheat? Become a martyr. <laughs> so get yourself killed. So... Paul, no wonder he was like a raving mania. It's like he wanted to die real quick. But that's why a lot of those Christians who d suffered under persecution, you'll be surprised how many of them have the crown of life and how many spoiled, rotten American Christians will miss out on this crown of life Amen. because they whine about the smallest trial and feat. Let alone they got killed for Jesus Christ. You want to cheat? You become a martyr for Jesus Christ. So if God called you to be a missionary to North Korea or something like that, that's not something to panic about, but to rejoice about. Because you're going to cheat. You're gonna, that's pretty unfair for a person who's went through trials for 30 years and you get it over with in a day. <laughs> Alright, let's look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2. 1 Peter 5, verse 2. The next crown is the crown of glory. Crown of glory. How do you get this crown of glory? In 1 Peter 5 and 2. It's through feeding the flock. Feeding the flock. So you properly feed God's flock. So the people who came here to Bible teaching today, if they are not fed properly through my preaching and teaching, then I'm not doing my job. And as a pastor, I'm going to miss this out. Now, how many pastors do you think are going to miss this one out? Huh? 
Yes, Lot, see? Lot. So if you get called upon to teach or to preach, that's something not to be scared about. That's something you should take it with eagerness and say, I want to get the crown of glory. That's something to say, yeah, I want to train me real quick, please. I want this one. All right, look at 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint. So if you feed, what happens? Verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. All right, the fourth crown, the fourth crown. Let's look at the book of 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24 through 25. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24 through 25. The next crown is the incorruptible crown. The incorruptible crown. My opinion, I could be wrong, but my opinion, this is probably the most difficult crown. It's basically self-training, self-discipline. So you have to make sure that everything in your Christian life is holy, clean. Just like a runner who keeps training himself, makes himself fit, you should do that as well as a fit Christian. Fit immature Christian. I've never seen a, a bunch of spoiled immature Christians in all my life in this Laodicean age. And as every generation passes by, I don't get excited about that one. It just gets more rotten and rotten because they don't learn how to be self-disciplined, but to become more dependent, more dependent. All right, let's look at the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We're going to look at verse 24 through 25. This is actually one of my favorite life verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 25, it reads the following, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that he may obtain. So you got to keep on running. All right? Keep yourself up. Why? You're going to attain the prize. What is that prize? And every man that striveth for the mystery is what? Temperate in all things. See that? He is temperate in all things. Very self-controlled. Self-disciplined. In everything. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are what? An incorruptible crown. Last crown we're going to cover is crown of rejoicing. Look at 1 Thessalonians 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. The last crown we're going to be covering is the crown of rejoicing. 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Thessalonians 2, excuse me. So you'll notice right here the crown of rejoicing. So how do you get this crown of rejoicing? How you get the crown of rejoicing is to do soul winning. All right. Now, you've heard so many times of preaching about soul winning, so many times about passing out tracts, so many opportunities to get involved in street preaching and visitation. If one person in this church cannot get the soul winning crown because of the church's fault, my goodness, I'm not doing my job. That's why we're going, we will always open soul winning no matter what. Always open it no matter what. Even when your pastor is not there, I'm going to make sure that we're going to still have soul winning, right? And you did it today. Amen. That's what happened. So it's soul winning. That's why it's important. That's why we urge you to tell people how to get saved, to pass out tracts. Because God's going to reward you for that. First Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to look at verse 19. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? So what is that crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ that is coming? So it's these people that Paul have won. See, these people that Paul have won to Christ. These are the people that make up his crown of rejoicing. For ye are our glory and joy. See that? So Paul said, it's them. So notice right here that this crown of rejoicing is by winning these people. So people that you're responsible for winning to Christ and coming to church, that's something you should be shouting about. That is something you should be excited about. So if you hesitate bringing people to church, I think you shouldn't hesitate. It's a chance for you to get this one.